Hello and good day to you. Um, so with today's video, I'm trying to, um, I think if I, if you watched the last video with uh, covariance, you probably sat there and felt a little bit terrified at the thought that um, you probably sat there and went, well, it's not as simple as what I wanted, that there is a little bit of adding and taking variables away into this general linear model. And what instead I want to show you is there is a way to um, data mine out what your uh, variable selection should be. And the title of this video is going to be terrifying being variable selection using a stepwise regression using a, 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 a car key information coefficient. If that doesn't scare you, I don't know. I don't know what would. But the good news is, even though it's that, that sounds terrifying, um, it's not really. In fact, it's it's when you get into it, you'll see that uh, R is really is is another is giving you a whole new bag of tricks uh, to work out actually what should go into your model, uh, and from a very simple idiot proof. Well, it's not none of this. None of this is perfectly idiot proof, but. You know, if you if you're lost to what you should be building, this this will give you a a good idea of you know creating an okay linear regression with only a few few lines of code. So I'm using the uh, real estate data. Uh, the library is the libraries you need to load are Oscar Lima Sierra Romeo Romeo uh, Mike. Alpha, Golf, Romeo, India, Tango, Tango, Romeo, uh, and Delta, Papa, Lima, Yankee, Romeo. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to go phonetic alphabet, but they are, uh, they're just, they're, ju they're just sort of uh, such alphabetic soup, uh, alpha alphabetical soup, aren't they? Uh, how R chooses to name its, its values. It's, uh, but, there you go, you can see them there. So how I want you to think about this is if I started with a linear regression uh, and I either, I either started with it empty or full of everything, then whichever, whichever one of those I'd started with, all I need to do is either work out what variable is causing the most inaccuracy in that model and drop it if it's full or if it's empty what variable if I added would improve the the accuracy the most so what you can think about is uh, these the r squared value and people often simplify r squared down to uh, how what percentage of the variance in the data is explained by the model and you cal calculate r square by uh, the sum of squares of the residuals of the model divided by the sum of squares of the residuals of the average of the data set um, look it up it's a re it, it gets used all over the place it's a great way of it's a really good rule of thumb headline uh, value to put in your you put in any notes or anything you share uh, to say why why you think this model is a good model uh, what you'll need to do is create a linear regression that includes everything so you'll do lm for linear regression data data um, you'll tell it the value you want to predict uh, as uh, here you'll do the squiggy line and if you put in a dot it, that will load all the values that isn't the uh, the y value into a linear regression model so then what you're going to do you use the ols uh, functions uh, and this one step all possible models so this will cycle through every single potential model uh, that, that you can get in the data and as you can see it takes a while uh, I've been because the uh, the number of models that are potentially possible uh, increases exponentially for every new variable you've added in. I've been told 
don't even try it with um, t t over 20 variables. It's going to be too much. Your computer will just be there chugging and calculating for ages. Uh, I mean, if you've if you've got a spare computer and you you wanted to leave it running over a weekend, and it was a really important um, value that you just had to have the best model, yeah, you could do that. So you can sort of see here. You've got your predict. You've, you've got your different models. It's run and it's got your R squares down here. So you then know what's your best model. But if you were in a problem of I have got more than twenty different variables, um, you might want to try the step forward uh, value, and you want to rather than using R as the accuracy, you want to use P. So you you run OLS step forward P. You input your model. Now, uh, the p value is a student t test on the residuals, and so one thing to be wary of there is if your residuals aren't um, aren't uh, aren't normally distributed or they look a bit odd, you have to do something with sandwich. Uh, sandwich estimators uh, I think that's the right term yeah you need to use um, sandwich estimators to uh, correct for it and I'm not going to go into that here um, but just be aware that you can't use the p-value in all instances but you can see here this is cycled through adding one new value each time so it started with x3 x4 x2 x5 x1 and it got it, you can see that it, it's improving the uh, R square value. The alternative is to do it backwards, which is taking, if I spell it right, uh, a full linear regression model, and instead of adding, it's removing, and it gets the same same model. You can do both. Which this what this will do is it will add a variable. Uh, it will add a variable, and then it will cycle through everything it's added. And if that if removing that addition improves the model, because you could imagine that you that you've suddenly got this new covariance being added, it will drop it. So then you can sort of look through this and write down a, a, a the set of values that you think uh, you you should use and the last one I'm going to show you is you can use AIC uh, which is the Akaki information coefficient and I need to learn the actual maths for this a bit better because uh, the Akaki information coefficient uh, is is about no models perfect and it's a it's a it's an attempt to estimate the information loss in the model and how well the model will predict unseen data so not it's not using the data in the um, it's not predicting directly from the data is my understanding but it's an estimation of how well uh, will how well will this model work and as you can see it wants to reduce it down and you can see it's come to the same conclusion you've got the same R squared value now that gives you multiple multiple ways of uh, selecting variables if you have started with a big pot of data uh, you can load it up into a linear in, into a linear regression uh, and then run it through one of these and it will give you a good idea of what uh, what variables you're going to add in because it will build a model, test it all very automatically. The only thing I will say is um, just because a value um, is a good predictor doesn't necessarily mean uh, it should be in your model if for ethical moral reasons i.e 
uh, nobody. Uh, I, I look up Compass is is what I would say on that one. Um, it was an AI that became racist because they included. Uh, it wasn't even even when they removed race, it was it became racist due to other values that acted as proxy. So there should always be a a decision on the ethics of what you're doing i mean even if you get a really accurate model but it's it's it, it, behind the scenes your your model is 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 coming to those conclusions through uh through a, a methodology which people might be offended if they knew about it uh you, that's something to worry about and i guess what i'm saying is if the, if ours automated some of the um the data variable choices i think you should pay that uh, that time back in analyzing and making sure that you understand the relationship between the variables that it's chosen and the outcome it's predicting and if you if you sort of sit there and go well it's very nebulous or it's not very good or maybe like in 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 this instance maybe we shouldn't work out the price of a uh, of a of a house based on latitude um because think of for a second what that actually means that's a good enough reason maybe to drop it or at least have the conversation about dropping it um and I don't know. Maybe I'm being slightly too preachy. Uh, I, I, I think, I think there's not a great deal of conversation about uh, making AI explainable. But I always think, I think, think when you're looking at models like these, is if you had to sit down and talk through your choices with somebody. Um, you know, you you should have you you should you should just have a, a concern that uh, you don't that you don't follow efficiency into something where you're not sure if you had those conversations whether they'd be fully ethical or moral. And I think data ethics is a bit of a an, an important legal lot of a thing but something we haven't really got as a, as a society to talk about yet. So anyway, I've rambled on uh, and uh, I hope you find this useful for choosing your, your, your variables to go into your data. I hope it simplifies things for you. I hope you, you will want to use more general linear models because you can see that from this, they're quite easy and quite fast to build uh, using one of these stepwise regressions. And hopefully you're no longer afraid of the Akaki information coefficient. Thank you very much. Have a good night and a good day. Goodbye.